Sisters of CBC. This is obviously a different form of uh, time in the Word than I would have hoped for for us this week, especially on our first week of Advent. Uh, this is a little disappointing, I'm sure, and, and even saddening, both of course because this means that we have uh, brothers and sisters who are ill or have been exposed. Uh, but also simply because we don't get to have the sweet fellowship in a time of worship like we have very much enjoyed having over the past few months. Uh, this isn't an attempt to have a service or even really to have a sermon uh, because I think for those of us that have been able to meet for the past four or five months, we've realized that there really is no a substitute or virtual version of what we do when we meet to worship. But at the same time, I think it's edifying and glorifying to God and hopefully encouraging to you to spend time in His Word uh, together, uh, to be bound around a text that's guiding all of our hearts and minds as if you choose to watch this, um, and that carries CBC into the Advent season from where we were in the series of Lamentation to where we are uh, heading as Pastor George and I have prepared to preach a series on the Advent of the King. Uh, hopefully we can do that uh, with real preaching and heralding of the gospel in person together in coming weeks, but if we can't, I'm sure we'll um, abridge and condense our thoughts just like I'm doing uh, for us this week. As Pastor George and I preached on the topic of lamentation and the book of lamentations, it was very clear to both of us that this was uh, needed by our body, that there are many who are going through individual laments above and beyond what we may be Expecting to experience, of course, there's the, the running jokes that we're all ready for 2020 to be over uh, between things like uh, the global pandemic and our political and cultural divisions, but there's also very real individual hurt within our body. People experiencing uh, emotional loss or uh, mental difficulties with things like anxiety or depression, uh, people let down by uh, friends or family, uh, and, and we are glad that Scripture speaks to those things. And what I want to do in this brief time together today is, is show how the advent of Christ speaks to those things also. So before we get into that, let's open in a word of prayer. Father God, we pray for the body of CBC, that you would guard us and protect us as COVID is increasing in our area, that you would give us wisdom for how to best serve you, how to fellowship, how to encourage one another and disciple one another towards sanctification. We pray for those who are experiencing difficulty, not just with uh, illness, but uh, with lament, Father, with lament over um, the state of their lives, or their sin, or their physical bodies hurting, or their mental anguish. Father, we just ask that as we turn our hearts and minds towards a season where we think about the fact that you sent your Son, and that Christ came willing to change the whole world for your glory and for your love for us, that we would be encouraged in that and that we would see even from your word this morning how the coming of Christ changes everything, including how we understand the very real laments of our heart. Father, we just ask that the Spirit would be at work in my consideration of the word and in others hearing of it. Father, we just ask that as we meditate on Zechariah's prophecy, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We thank you for Jesus, who, as Zechariah told us, has been our Redeemer. 
And it's in his name we pray. Amen. As I mentioned, and if you want to turn with me, I'm going to be looking at Luke chapter 1, at uh, Zechariah's prophecy after he regains his ability to speak. Um, and I, I, I was reading through the Gospel of Luke while also studying Lamentations and then listening to Pastor George preach on that beautiful central portion of Lamentations 3 where we where we hear that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end, uh, his faithfulness is great, these are new every morning, and it reminds uh, me of what I see Zechariah saying will come to pass in the incarnation of Jesus. And so I want to read this text and then give some practical meditations on it uh, and, and how the coming of Jesus speaks to our laments. This is starting in verse 68 and reading right through verse 79 of Luke chapter 1. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. These are the words of the Lord from Luke chapter 1. And as we read those uh, two poetic sentences from Zechariah, I'm sure many of us have read these many times before. I've taught on this text before, and it's one of my favorite exclamations of, of great promise and joy from the uh, Advent season that we see in the Gospels. Of course, you have many others, whether it's the angels or Mary or Simeon, but I do love this Zechariah uh, prophecy. But as we look at these two sentences, I think we might tend to emphasize the poetic above the practical at times. And it is poetic. And it does speak in broad pictures with metaphors and figures of speech. But these figures of speech that are in Zechariah's prophecy also are figures of speech that are often used to speak uh, on the flip side, on, on, the, on the darker side of things, if you will, and, and as the text does, about the things that discourage us or concern us or cause us to lament. As you read in Lamentations 3, uh, and, and as I preached in those opening verses, you see uh, numerous causes for lament laid out in poetic terms. And so many of those poetic terms are right here in Luke or in Zechariah's prophecy and so I want to just go through these verses and point out how the coming of Christ really practically impacts our lament and of course as we think about Advent and the coming of a king it should be pointed out before I even jump in that we look at what Jesus accomplished in his first coming in the redemption of his people and in the um, spiritual reigning that he has over our life through the power of the Holy Spirit within us. And we see that in one sense, these things are already accomplished. And in another sense, they point forward to the second coming of Jesus. So when we look at Advent and, and we think of the first week of Advent, we think of hope. And, and here we see hope for now and hope for a future because Jesus came. So when, when I look through these verses and, and I see right away that 
that Jesus offers salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. And I think when we read the Psalms of Lament or when we read Lamentations, uh, this is a real cause of lament for God's people over history. For us, it might be different today. Uh, we might not have um, enemies in the same political, practical sense that a David did or that a Jeremiah did. Uh, but there are many who are lamenting because of difficult physical circumstances, because of uh, a situation that is oppressing and seems as if there is no relief in sight from it. And yet we see in verse 71, Jesus came that we might be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Of course, this is true in a spiritual sense, but in an ultimate and physical sense, this is also true. That, that Jesus came to redeem his people and that in doing that, he has delivered us from our enemies, from difficult circumstances that seem to some of you today as if there's uh, nothing that could be of greater significance, but there is, there's our redemption. And Jesus came to accomplish that. For those who might be lamenting over broken promises and unfaithful people, Jesus came for that. It says in verse 72 that he came to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. See, God is a faithful God. God is a merciful God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And the way that we have seen his mercy most brilliantly most expressive of who God is, is in the coming of Jesus, by which we're redeemed, and by which we have a friend who is perfectly faithful. This friend, Jesus, has redeemed us to God, a faithful God. Uh, we, I, I think of Paul's words in Galatians, speaking of the incarnation, when he said, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. See, Paul is saying we have the faithfulness of God come to earth in the fullness of time through Jesus so that even now the Holy Spirit can reside in our hearts and, and point towards our faithful Father. Uh, what a beautiful Trinitarian working of God that speaks to our lament. So many of us are rightly lamenting the unfaithfulness of others. It might be friends who have let you down, family who have seemed to uh, swerve from the faith. It could even be the unfaithfulness of a spouse or of a, of a long-time relationship. And these are real causes for lament. As we said in our study in lament, lament is expression, expressing our sadness or grief over the curse of sin in play in the world today and the unfaithfulness of man is certainly a proof of the curse of sin but God has given us the ability to see our faithful father and to have the Holy Spirit speak that truth to our hearts because Jesus came in the fullness of time to go on in, in Zechariah's great prophecy we see in verse 74, that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Fear is certainly a great cause of lament for many today. People are afraid of this pandemic, 
afraid of losing friends or family, afraid of the, the political culture of our country. And fear has an, the ability, just like difficult circumstances, to seem all-encompassing, like it's the most important thing in our lives. And yet, uh, God has called us to something greater, which is to serve him. And Christ's coming accomplished the possibility that we could serve him without fear. This is not me trying to say, don't worry, be happy, all on your own, or, or just, just grin and bear it, but instead to speak to your fears that God is greater and that he's proven that in the coming of his son Jesus and that it will be proven again when Jesus comes again. Moving along in Zechariah's prophecy, he says in verse 77, well, we'll start in verse 76, and you, child, speaking to his son, John, you'll be called the prophet of the Most High, which is just an awesome title for God, right? Um, it's, it's in Mary's uh, promise also that she's going to deliver the Son of the Most High. Here John will be the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. If there's anything that should cause lament for God's people, it's the reality of our ongoing sinfulness. And uh, there is a right lament over sin. But at the same time, there is the uh, difficulty of being so in despair over sin that you can fail to see the Savior who has come to forgive you of your sin. I love how Zechariah words this. He says that John will give the people knowledge of salvation, but not just knowledge of salvation, but how that salvation will come to them. Knowledge of salvation in the forgiveness of their sins. See, the coming of Jesus uh, provided knowledge and actual forgiveness. And both are are greatly needed as we battle against lamenting over sin, especially a lament that's, that's paralyzing and, and that um, causes you to despair. Give the despair over your sin to the Savior, the one who forgives us our sins, both that once and for all time on the cross and in an ongoing way as he intercedes for us. See, we who are his people, who have been redeemed, we ought not be in paralyzing despair over sin. We should grieve our sin. We should lament over sin. But we also should ultimately be able to cry out, Abba, Father, I know I am your son, not a slave any longer, because Jesus has come. The advent of Jesus gives us incredible hope to know that our sins have been forgiven and that we truly are sons of God. As we go on uh, into these last two ways that the coming of Christ gives us hope, I'm, I'm amazed by how they speak to causes of lament that I see very much around me in, in, in individuals who have come up and talked to me after our, our sermon uh, series or talked to Pastor George, who, who can identify with uh, realities of darkness and even being under the shadow of death or um, under crippling anxiety. And Jesus came for that. Zechariah says, 
because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. As I preached maybe five or six weeks ago on causes of lament, I pointed to um, the, the metaphor or picture of darkness that has been throughout all of Western civilization some kind of expression of um, mental and emotional despair. And of course, light and dark can speak to a, a contrasting reality in many ways. People have talked about, um, you know, a light bulb that comes on over our heads to speak of knowledge, right? We didn't know something, we were in darkness. Now we know it, we're in light. Um, there is a spiritual, uh, clearly a spiritual sense in which um, light and God's glory and our knowledge or awareness of him is, is a difference between light and dark. Um, but that spiritual difference also impacts our mental or emotional light and dark. Um, as, as David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Right? That's what Pastor George preached on this spring when we were, when we were using this video medium and, and trying to encourage hearts. The coming of Christ speaks to our darkness. Just like the sun that visits us from on high, the knowledge of Jesus should be the most wonderful antidote to your darkness. Some of you in many ways feel even in the shadow of death, whether that's um, because of age and frailty or because of loved ones who may be near to death, or because of just crippling mental darkness, let this Advent season be a time where the sunrise from on high encourages your heart. Finally, and I, and I love this closing, Zechariah says that Jesus came to guide our feet into the way of peace. And boy, could we use peace. I mean, we are a world, a, a creation groaning for peace. Some of us are experiencing incredible anxiety right now. I, I, I know that for a fact, whether it be um, the anxiety of what to do in a holiday season when, when we're just unsure of what's prudent or wise, or it's, it's anxiety over um, loved ones, or uh, maybe even anxiety over things that you can't quite put a finger on, but it's deep and it's overwhelming and it's serious uh, and it's all that your mind can dwell on and I would encourage you to do your best to dwell on Christ to see his coming as cause for great joy to read Matthew 1 and 2 to read Luke 1 and 2 maybe daily in the month of December so that you can sing with the angels glory to God in the highest so that you can sing with Mary my soul magnifies the Lord so that you can say like Simeon now I can depart in peace for I have seen him and to really rejoice in Christ to to look forward to his second coming to know that Lament is real, the, the curse of sin is real, 
but it's not forever. Our king came once and he can reign in our hearts today because of what he accomplished through the forgiveness of our sin, but he is also coming again and will rule the world with truth and peace. And he will um, deliver our hearts from lament in the truest and ultimate sense. Pastor George and I are looking forward to looking at uh, more texts that speak to how Christ's coming was the coming of a king, and it's a coming of a king that looks forward to his ultimate reign in the future. But I wanted to end this, this looking at lament by, by hopefully showing you how the coming of Jesus should speak in real and practical ways to our lament today. Uh, Jesus didn't just come to fix our individual laments. I don't mean to make it sound that way. I would say Jesus came for the glory of God, first of all, and, and because God loved us and chose to redeem us, second of all, but those realities speak into our hearts in practical and real ways that we shouldn't overlook. If you don't know Jesus, lament is inevitable and will be ongoing. But blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Praise and glory to the Father, praise and glory to the Son, praise and glory to the Spirit, ever three and ever one.